So in the first two videos, Gage has explained how to go about purchasing a knife and what are the important things you wanna know when it comes to picking up your new blade. He also has explained and demonstrated how to properly sharpen a knife and what the steps are involved in that, including the stones and the angles that you wanna use depending on what you're sharpening. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about what you can do to properly care for your your new knife. Now Gage, I'm super excited about this video and I can't wait to hear what you have to say about this. So when it comes to caring for your knives, what do people need to know? Um, okay, so what people need to know, I like to sort of split um, knife care into two sections, uh, one of which is good habits to get into during use of the knife, um, so while you're chopping up, while you're preparing for, for, for dinner, um, and uh, good habits to get into after you've finished using your knife, um, how to properly wash it and store it. So uh, good habits you can get into while using your knife, uh, number one is setting up your station for success. So you want to use a, uh, ideally a wood cutting board, um, either made from uh, walnut, maple, um, any sort of hardwood is going to be best. Um, you also want to make sure that that board is stable, so putting a damp towel underneath your board uh, will help it from moving around while you're using it uh, and create a stable, safe uh, platform to work on. Um, ideally, you have an end-grained cutting board, so uh, on most uh, wood cutting boards, they're made in a process called face grain, meaning that all the grains of the wood are running linearly down, down the length of the board, and we're going to end up cutting across those grains, which is going to dull our knife faster than using, say, an end-grain board, in which all of the grains of the wood are stood straight up, um, and our knife is going to fit just in between all those grains, um, and, and allow the knife to stay sharper for longer. Um, I, ideally, um, like I said, end grain, um, a face grain wood board is most certainly better than using, say, a plastic board. Um, and a plastic board, I would say, is still better than using, say, a granite or a glass cutting board. Whoever decided to make a cutting board out of either of those materials uh, um, did, had no idea what they were doing. Um, so. I would really, really strongly recommend staying away from glass, granite, plastic. Um, like I said, ideally we're using an end grain wood cutting board. Um, secondly, uh, this is a big one. I see a lot of home cooks doing this is scraping the edge of their knife across their cutting board to gather ingredients. Um, this is uh, going to lead to the rolling of our edge over one side of the knife like we talked about earlier. Um, that, that the edge folding over one side of our blade is going to cause it to dull quite a bit faster. So really simply all you're going to do is flip your knife over and use the spine of the knife to scrape things together. It's just as effective as using the edge uh, but you don't damage the edge of your knife while doing so. Once you're finished using your knife, uh, some of the habits that I recommend getting into after um, are to properly wash it with warm soapy water. Um, dish soap is totally fine. Um, you want to use, uh, you want to wash your knife by hand. Um, putting your knife in the dishwasher is going to um, degrade the knife over time. Um, dishwashers get up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. It's quite hot. Um, boiling water is 212, so we're almost to the boiling point in, in most dishwashers. And especially uh, if we're using a, a beautiful Japanese knife, um, the wooden handles on them, while very resilient if washed by hand, um, are not going to stand up to the temperatures in a dishwasher. So wash your knives by hand, like I said, warm soap, uh, soapy water, um, and then be very sure that your knife goes away completely dry. So um, with a completely dry towel, make sure the blade gets dried, the handle gets dried, and in fact, leave the knife out on that dry towel just to air dry a little bit and be extra, extra safe, especially if you're working with carbon steel uh, before it gets placed um, in its storage um, device of choice. Um, so we'll talk uh, a bit about storage um, options. Um, the most common you'll see in most kitchens probably is the wood block, which is a, a very adequate um, storage device. Um, another habit that I see a lot of people getting into is, is using the edge of your knife to guide the knife into the knife block. Um, I would recommend 
uh, placing the spine at the top of the slot and using that to guide the knife in. Um, anytime we're running the edge of our knife along any surface, it's going to dull it faster. Um, the other thing you want to avoid is dropping the knife into the knife block um, as not every knife is perfectly suited to the knife block. It may be a little bit longer than the slot in the knife block and if we're just to let the knife drop, uh, you definitely run the risk of breaking the tip of your knife off or bending it, um, either of which are not ideal. Um, if you were to store your knife in the drawer, I do recommend picking up a knife sleeve or a knife guard of some kind. Um, again, um, we want to make sure the edge of the knife is protected, um, as well as our fingers, especially if we're reaching into a drawer to grab something sharp. Uh, we don't want that exposed edge going into our fingers or going into anything else that may be in the drawer and dull our knife. Um, finally, the last one we'll talk about is the magnetic bar. Um, I carry really, really beautiful leather coated bars um, that are very, very gentle on your knife. Um, if you do make a mistake and, and by chance put the edge of the knife into the magnetic bar, if it's made from leather such as mine, uh, they're going to be very gentle on your edge. Still not ideal obviously, but not going to punish you the same as say a metal bar would. Um, if you do have a metal bar at home, nothing wrong with them, um, just be very careful to um, put the uh, spine of the knife down first and then roll the knife down. Um, that's going to ensure the, the edge of the knife is never coming in contact with the, with the metal, which would really, really dull your knife very quickly if you were to run it along that. So, That's great. Thanks so much for taking the time to explain how to care for your knife. Because I imagine that people watching this series, once they figured out how to uh, purchase a knife effectively, how to sharpen it effectively, you're going to want to know how to care for it, especially if they're coming in and they're buying something that's a little bit higher quality, a little bit higher price point. I'm sure that you know you want to know how to take care of it. And I have to say overall, um, you know, this has been such a great series for me to shoot with you because I've learned so much in this process. Um, being somebody who has sharpened my knives for a while, um, I'm realizing there's so much depth to it that I didn't know. And um, I think that, you know, I personally have had a lot of my questions answered through the series, and I hope it's been the same for uh, the people watching. Um, but I just wanna say thank you so much for taking the time and, and for um, really just sharing your experience and your expertise in this area with us, uh, because it's truly, truly invaluable for somebody who's looking to get started in this area. So thanks for that, Gage. Yeah, it really was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, I'm super passionate about knives and cooking in general. Um, so if you are in the area and you decide to come down, um, I love having people in the shop and, and talking about knives. Whether you're interested in picking one up or not, um, come down, um, feel a bunch of knives and, and have a chat with me about, about, uh, about, about the knives that I carry. So if you like this video and you're feeling gung-ho and you're really interested in checking out the knives that Gage has to offer, uh, if you're local and you're in the greater Hamilton area, feel free to come by and stop into his shop. But if you're not, do not worry because Gage also has an online store and I will put the link to his webpage down below in the description box. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.